Hi there, we've got a uh, sequence all done. Now we want to export it out. So we're going to export it out. I'm going to click on the timeline panel. Make sure that blue lines around this because if it's not, you can't really do an export until you select that panel. So once you go to file, you can go to export. You can come over here to media. And when I'm going to do the uh, actual export window for Premiere itself comes up. Now you could use this as a method of exporting. Uh, I actually prefer coming over to what's called Q. And when I click on Q, it's going to export out the data for my sequence here in Premiere. And it's going to link to it and put a link into what's called the Adobe Media Encoder. What I like about this is I can go into the media encoder and I can ask it to export out maybe two or three different variations of the video to be used in two or three different places. Maybe one for Vimeo, maybe one for YouTube. So I'm actually, actually able to come over and pick multiple ways to encode it and then just walk away and let it do it. So now it's coming up here and I'm going to move the encoder window up here so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, over here on this side I have some older clips I've done before so I'm going to remove those so you don't get confused. So here we have our under basket sequence. That was the name of the sequence back in Premiere. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pick this under basket and over here on the left there's something called system presets. Now there's a ton of presets over here. The one you're going to use probably most commonly is you're going to use what's called H.264 for if you were going to output maybe a video to back to a computer to play back maybe on a projection screen or something like that or a video projector. In our case we're coming down to what's called, and these are all open, I'm going to come down here to web video. And when I open up the web video area, notice we have one for Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Vimeo, we have YouTube. So I want to output this out a copy to be used on YouTube. I'm going to come back over here, I'm going to hover over this little icon that says my preset. This is Matt, this is telling me what the video was edited at back in Premiere. And I can see it was a 1280 by 720 size image. So I'm going to match that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick 720 YouTube. I'm going to double click. Now that's going to add it over here for a method to output under basket encoded this way for YouTube. Maybe I want to also do one for Facebook. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take the Facebook 720. I'm going to double click. Whoops. Got to have this picked. And double click. And then it will add the Facebook encoding over here. Now, before I do the process of this encoding, I don't really need to output one that matches my exact timeline and sequence. If I was going to do that, I might do this. If I was going to output it to be played back on a video projector. Uh, in this case, I guess I will leave it there. Now, what I'm going to do next is a little bit unique. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go back to YouTube, for example, and I'm going to pick my 720, and I'm going to come over, make sure that's highlighted, and I'm going to double click. And that's going to add another instance of YouTube 720, just like the preset before. But this time, I'm going to click on the preset so I can make some custom adjustments to the built-in preset. Now it takes me back to the original export window in Premiere. So what I'm going to show you here is there is some tabs in here, effects, video, and so on. I'm going to come over to this one called video. And then I'm going to come down, and I'm going to come down here to bitrate settings. Now, 
These are the default settings for the preset within Media Encoder. These will give you a very, very good file. Excellent quality, but the file is going to be relatively large. If I look down here, let me move this up a little bit, it's going to be a 32 megabyte file, and this is only 16 seconds. So if you had a three or five minute file, that's going to be a significantly large file size. What you can do is you can run some tests. And from research on my end, you can do a, a, uh, by going to Google, doing a Google search and saying, what are the optimal bitrate settings to get a good quality file on YouTube, but a smaller size? And I found that if you come over here on this target, you can slide this down and run some tests. Maybe we'll bring them uh, down to approximately 6 megabits per second, and both that and the maximum bit rate. Now this is down to 12 megabytes, so it's significantly reduced the size of this. And so what you do next is I'm going to come up here where it says Custom, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to maybe even come up here and I'll give it a saving feature of Save Preset. I may use this name, copy of YouTube 720, and then I'll put in uh, 5.7 slash 5.7. So I knew what the target and the maximum bit rates were for this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click and OK. Now I'm going to click OK out of here. So now I'm going to ask Premiere to export out four different variations of my sequence. One to match what I had when I edited it. One to take the default YouTube for 720 at maximum quality of target 16 and max output of 16. The Facebook one and also my copy where I reduce down the bit rates. So now really the only thing I have to do is I have to look over here and notice where is this going to be output. So this tells me where it's saved. So now I've hit the enter key and I apologize I should have showed you the green arrow up here. It's actually going in here now and encoding these videos. So we'll take a second here. I'm going to click an arrow down below here where it says Output Preview. And you can see here's all four of the videos being output with different encoding rates. Um, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. But I'm going to go ahead and I'll talk here just for a second and see if it will finish up. This is a real short video. That's why I'm not pausing it. So now all four of those are actually done. So let's take a look at those videos. I've actually saved them to my desktop and I have put them into a folder. So I'm going to minimize the media encoder and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to double click on encoded video. So here's my four different files. Now I'm going to come over here I'm going to kind of move some columns run here so you can see it and I'll bring this over here so my files are now back out here encoded and it's and I don't know which one at this point I apologize I should have I'll show you how to rename them back in uh, media encoder so you know which one was for Yahoo and so on but now they're ranging in size from 13 megabytes to 35 and a half megabytes so these are the different videos that I could actually come over and actually play and preview here on my screen. So I can take a look at the quality here. So those would be the videos that I could go ahead and give to my web developer or my other people to either upload to the source like YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook 
Uh, I could put one maybe on my website. I could have one to play back on my computer. So I, this is the way I would do the export of my videos out. I would use the media encoder because it gives me those different methods of encoding it and then having them all go out at once. One thing I'm going to come back to, I'm going to come back to media encoder here. I can come over here and where it shows me the output file, I can click on this and then I could pick a specific folder for it to go to. That way I could make a folder up for Vimeo or YouTube and so on and that way I could kind of keep track of which one of these was supposed to be the YouTube video which one's supposed to be the Facebook video. So just know I have the ability here to maybe put them into a different folder then I would know which one is which. Um, when you're done you're all set. If you want to come back to Media Encoder and you happen to have an old video up here just click on it and then delete it. It's, it's really just the linking the link back to the video. It's not deleting any of the video files or anything. It's just the linking, it's just deleting the link back to it. So go ahead and try the media encoder. I think it's a fabulous program and it makes it pretty easy to output some files after you run some tests.